Hello, much excitement today because I received this giant box and who doesn't like a big box? And I'm always doing this and thinking, ah, what, what would it be, what would it be? Of course, I, at some point I've probably made a thumbnail so you know what it is. It's a great big bloody quad, it is. It is from Sequoia, most known for making uh, nice soldering irons. This is called the BK Li 10. This is the prop, it looks ridiculous. And this is what you get in the box. Let me get it out. Obviously elsewhere in the box you get another two great props, some battery straps, motor screws, an antenna. I'll pop that on now. And these which are sort of uh, friction pads for helping the battery stick on. So this is what we got. Look at it. It's, it's very big. It is a big beastie. It's unbelievably big. It's quite exciting though. And you've got a fair amount of space here. Look at the size of that uh, wire. This has got an XT90 connector on it, which means um, I need to get a converter. I'm, uh, supposedly I should be using batteries with XT90 connectors on, but I don't have any. I'm gonna have to use an XT60 connected onto that. So what have we got on this thing? This is obviously a 10-inch quad. Um, it's got an Express LRS receiver. I went for the uh, 868-915 version because a 2.4 receivers, the antenna's so tiny in this, it just gets dwarfed by all the carbon and that can be a problem in a bigger quad. Uh, it's got a 2.5 watt VTX, so it's built for range. And these rather chunky motors are 3111 900kVs. We've got a 70 amp 4 in 1 ESC. Uh, it's, it's designed to run on 6S between about 5000 to 8000 milliamp hours. I don't exactly know what sort of flight controller's on there. I'll plug it in and find out. Is it F7? Is it F4? Don't know. Don't know what the camera is. Um, but I'll pop it on beta flight while I go and order some XT90 connectors and at some point we can put these ginormous props on to see how that looks. I mean the props are big and the frame's big but with the, the props are going to come in quite away so it's, it, it's an odd one. These are seven millimeter thick these arms and even though they're very long there's not much there's not much on that you can't really flex them they are big arms. This is a big quad this should be interesting to fly. I hope I don't break a prop, because these are expensive to replace. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, I'll order the stuff and we'll look at it on Betaflight and uh, get it set up. So here we are on Betaflight and all I've done is set up the absolute bare essentials. So I've made sure my transmitter is binding and I've got my mode set up. Everything else I've left as is. Couple of interesting things in this one. First off, we've got a barrow sensor. Useful, we'll put it in the OSD. Secondly, and it's weird, there is no GPS on this quad, but there is one set up uh, for UART 6, which obviously it's not there. And if we look in the configuration, you'll notice it's been enabled there, which is a bit weird to say it hasn't got one. I mean, if they set it up for one, why not have one? Another slightly curious thing, I guess, for a quad this size is the motor direction is reversed. I don't know why that's a surprise. I, I think of that normally about like whoops and things, but yeah, it's got its props reversed so don't put them on the wrong way. Uh, everything else seems set up. We've got the video transmitter all the way up to two, two and a half watts there, which is a lot. Uh, and I've obviously hooked this up just to make sure it's all working and that looks good. So almost time to fly once I get that XT90 adapter. And I've gone ahead, I got hold of an XT90 adapter and connected it to an XT60 adapter as my basic adapter so I don't have to uh, use the XT90. Obviously XT90s can carry more amps, that's the plan, but I'm not intending to you know really rock this hard because I want to fly it with these lithium-ion batteries. So I've got this, this is a 4000 and obviously that would fit on there and this thing can carry up to 10,000 so my plan was maybe to have two, hence the two battery straps, uh, along with this parallel cable so I can connect them both up and that should fly in theory for a long time but let's go and find out. Just before we get into the flying, a quick ad for these headphones. You might see them just in my ear there and they're called the Nuity Open Fit 2. Normally, when I'm just walking about, I don't do anything. I just sort of walk around with my own thoughts, but sometimes that can be a bit of a dark place. I don't really like listening to music, but I have started listening to podcasts when I'm walking to the field or walking the dog or just walking, really. I find it quite useful. The reason I kind of like these headphones is they're a little bit different. I don't really like over-the-ear headphones and sometimes the in-ear headphones can kind of make my ears a bit painful, but these kind of fit around the ear and sort of lie on top. So there's never any sort of danger of them hurting you. 
and I kind of like the fact that I can still hear background noise just in case you know you're crossing the road and there's a car coming or there's a cow charging at you useful to hear what's going on so if you're interested in looking at a pair of these there will be a link in the description of the video now let's get on with the flying hello and welcome to the field where it's kind of sunny but it's almost October now so pretty cold and as per normal with this field even though it says wind is light it's quite blowy but that shouldn't be a problem because today we are flying this monster 10 inch drone which I can barely fit in the frame that's how big it is um, a couple of things about this quad it's kind of set up so it's got well it says I have a GPS but in beta flight it's set up to include a GPS but there is no GPS here Obviously, we can add one in, but we haven't done that yet. So we won't be going miles and miles. The other thing is, this thing flies with, you know, sort of eight to 10,000 milliamp per batteries. I've got three of these 4,000. So I've got myself a parallel cable on there so I can fly with two, but I've only got three of them. So I'm going to try it off with one at 4,000. Hopefully it doesn't pull too many amps and then we'll, we'll go with two. And I don't think I'll be going too far away, keeping it in relatively close seeing how it flies, seeing how it performs. Not really flown something this big in a modern quad. My old tricopters and things were like 11 inch props, but they didn't have anywhere near the same sort of power. So I'll be very careful. That's why I put the landing mat literally <laughs> right by my feet. That might be a mistake, we'll see. Anyway, let's get flying. We're recording. And we're an acro and uh, air. There, some first thing I notice is we do have some pretty bad ESC noise there. It's like it's raining, which is not particularly nice. As expected, my battery has dropped down a little bit far, and we're not getting an amazing thing. The Nomad module's already gone up to one watt. And we've got some screen tearing. Telemetry recovered. Oh, that's interesting. It looks like it's settled down a little bit on the screen there. Interesting, it doesn't sound too different from a regular quad. Oh, wow, that is... Oh, actually, it's not the Nomad module. This, this is, I'm using 2.4, my regular 2.4. Which is straight up to recovered. 1 watt. Obviously, this is Telemetry a recovered. big quad, and that antenna is easily blocked, it would seem. And I do not, well, there's not a lot about this I like right now, because what we've got is we've got, we've got screen tearing, we've got um, very hard to keep a decent signal. Uh, I mean, it's okay here, it's flashing because the alarm must be on the wrong setting. How does it fly if I do things with it? So if I go... <laughs> That's quite fun. But yeah, this, uh, either the camera or the VTX, or, or the fact it's got a very large motors and sort of ESCs that aren't particularly well shielded from stuff is causing a bit of an issue, I have to say. It's not the fun experience I was hoping for so far. And we got a lot of jello on the camera as well, so... Telemetry last. Ugh. Yeah, we're up to one watt again, even though it's... It's literally... Uh, it's in my eye line at this point. We're only like... 250... Uh, no, it goes up about 400 metres right at the end of the field, but... It's not far away. To say it's having this problem. It's a bit bumpy. Telemetry recovered. Generally, I call it not very good right now. Let's see if there's anyone around here. Although I don't know what my signal might be. Oh, there's a person, so we won't fly over him. I suspected that battery is not lasting too long. I mean, I can't really approach trees when I get the screen tear like that. It's a bit of a pain. Okay. 
I was going to give it a bit of full throttle, but last. probably not in this battery. Let's bring it in, I'll put the two batteries on, and then we can have a bit of a, a better time with that one. Let's go with this to land. Oh, man. Telemetry recovered. of where the camera is no, going forward too much. Put it down there, I think. Okay, so we're off on the second flight. So I've got two 4,000 milliamp hour lithium ion batteries. So we've got 8,000 total. I'm thinking we should get a lot of flight time. At least that's what the advertised thing says. Now, watching the DVR back, it's not actually as jumpy as it felt. YouTube plus playback seems to cut this down but when I was flying this I was just like man this is like a bag of bricks it's it's as bobbly and as wobbly as anything I've ever flown in fact I even think my fly my old 12 year old stuff that I did a few months ago was better than this it, uh, it is pretty bad and it really cuts the fun out now up here if you notice just as I went around this corner there's a bit of a flash of something and I was like, what What just went on? I thought, did I hit something? Did one of the battery leads strike a prop or something? Um, it all went a bit dodgy and then it's it's okay again. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. But I, I will be able to show you in a second what happened once I do this flight. So yeah, the problem with this is I come out and I fly FPV and normally when I fly a quad, even if it's not that good, I have a bit of fun with it messing around with this. I'm having zero amounts of fun. Every time I fly it or do anything with it, it's there's just problems. There's just issues and it's no fun at all. It's It just seems absolute hassle. There's so many things that seem wrong with it. I don't know where to start. I mean, if it flew smoothly and had issues, that wouldn't be a problem, but it's got so many issues. and. The, the, the lack of smooth flying is the biggest one. I would point out that with my Nomad module, I noticed um, I had the antennas pointing straight up in the first battery, which is not that good because my receiver antenna is horizontally polarized. So I put those both out at a 45 degree angle and it's better. You will see, you will still see it go up to like one watt uh, at, at a moment's notice, but it's not too bad if it's behind, but it is an awful lot of quad and very easy to block the signal with it. I did try doing regular small quad stuff like sort of taking it and trying to get it under the trees here, which was a little bit worrying. The VTX, it's on 800 milliwatts. I actually turned it up and it's still pretty bad. I think the camera on a still image is okay, but there's jello and of course the whole quad shaking and that makes it all very bad. I did a bit of a throttle there and I thought the battery was going to cook itself. It was so bad. Um, it's it's just really bad. So basically I, I flew around. I was expecting to get, you know, maybe 20 minutes out of these uh, batteries, but I didn't. I came in at just under five minutes. Now, to be fair, there was more battery left in there, but really at this point I was like, this is... This is absolutely no fun at all. Why am I bothering? So I brought it down. There was a section where we had a little bit of a, a wibble and I've blended it and it's only got one battery. Uh, so I think the other battery's come down over the other field. So I'm gonna have to go and uh, search for it, which is super fun, isn't it? So I guess what we have there is an image of the battery flying past. So I'm quite glad I noticed it and quite glad I got the DVR because that at least tells me where it went down in the field and I'm not having to look over sort of, you know, several acres of space. Hey, hello. Oh God, <laughs> that impacted. It's about 15 minutes of searching. It's a ploughed field and I thought it would stick out. I worked out it was kind of along from there, but I didn't think it came this far, but it really, it really did and it's not, uh, it's, it's not been too kind to it, but it's not like swelled up or anything. Fortunately, light ions are a little bit happier than lipos, but yay, we've got it back. So, <laughs> saves me 40 odd quid. Well, this is a colossal disappointment. I mean, look at it, it looks amazing. 
but it flies like a pig. So essentially, it's just lipstick on a pig, really. I don't quite know why it doesn't fly very well. It's got an H7 flight controller. I mean, that's the best you can get. Is it that the motors are jank? Is it that the tune is rubbish? Certainly the camera. I've not seen jello like that in, in a long time and it was getting a lot of interference and noise from, I presume, the ESCs and these massive motors. So there's a lot of claims on the website about it that can't be substantiated. Like, it might take a payload of up to four kilograms, but I really don't think you get much flight time as that. Yes, I was using lithium ion, but taking it gently, I would still expect a decent amount of time. This is saying on the website, you get 45 minutes, presumably from 10,000 milliamp hour LiPo. Uh, I just don't see it based on what I was getting. Also talking about a high power VTX and strong anti-interference. The VTX was certainly strong, but I did see it black out very quickly, uh, going just behind a few trees. And this is a big old antenna. Maybe it's not a very good antenna. It's just, there's just so many problems with it. Now, I'm well aware that these large quads with their so-called payload carrying capability are being looked at as, let's call them one-way delivery drones with a mission where they don't come back again. That might be the case. I, I tend to think if I've got one, then nobody's using it for bad things, at least. I, I don't know if I could fly in a straight line for that long to, to get to, to my, my target of interest, if you like. It's just, there's so much, there's just so much wrong with it. Could it be tuned up? Perhaps so, but certainly that camera would have to go. Um, we've got real problems with this blocking the frame. Maybe that should go up. Um, vertically polarise and have a bit more chance there. I don't know. I, I just didn't have fun flying it, so I really can't recommend it to anybody. But I, I'll leave it up to you guys. If you really want to see this thing fly, then you know perhaps I can go and give it some attempts at tuning and make it a bit better. Because as it flies now, it's so little fun. There's so little I want to fly. Um, and it's crash, crashly disappointing, but there you go. Anyway, if you want to check out in more detail, many thanks to Secure for sending over. This is the BKEL LI10 long range and a large load FPV drone and uh, there'll be a link down below so you can check it out in more detail. I hope that's been helpful. I'll catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.